So hi, Micro Punter here. Well, I did improve the image quality of my micrographs in one of my previous videos and I immediately got a question by one of my viewers. How do you use Photoshop to improve the micrograph images that you make? And uh, thank you for the question, of course. And in this video, I'm going to show you two methods how you can increase the contrast very easily. But I'm not going to show it on Photoshop because Photoshop is a commercial program. I'm going to show you two free alternatives that work just as well and uh, I think that if you know how to use uh, these tools in those uh, programs then the image quality of your images are going to be greatly uh, improved and the first program that I'll be using is the program GIMP which you can download uh, for free because it's an open source program. When you open GIMP, uh, then you're just gonna see a small window um, and you open the file by drag and dropping it into this window. Um, it's gonna ask you to convert the colors. Maybe you just click convert and here is the file that we're going to improve. Um, it's now, there is now a menu at the top and uh, you now go up into the menu into the colors menu, um, not into the tools menu, into the colors menu and you go down levels it's called. You click on the levels menu and uh, what you're going to see is the so-called histogram. Um, and this histogram here, this is the one that we're going to adjust now. And uh, it, uh, you can see that uh, the histogram actually does not cover the full range here. Um, so the orange arrow points now to the histogram. And uh, when the histogram is high, then it means that there is a lot of color um, of a certain color present. Um, beneath the histogram, there is a gradient going from black on the left all the way to white um, on the right and um, yet beneath it there are three small triangles and these are little tools or levers that you can push and pull and we'll be adjusting the histogram here. You notice that the histogram um, does not stretch the full range but ends there and where the orange arrows are this is where we have to drag the levers to and all right here on the side you see that there is uh, essentially no color present in the image so the full range or the full contrast range is not used. So uh, what you do is, is you go to the right uh, little um, triangle and you pull it just right uh, to the place where the histogram starts and you do the same thing with the left one with a black one and uh, now we've essentially adjusted the histogram in such a way or the, the contrast in such a way that black and white are both uh, present and then if you uh, drag the middle one this then adjusts the overall brightness um, of the image. And uh, uh, we're not losing any color information this way because we're not cutting off uh, um, yeah, any any, uh, any colors here. Yeah, uh, so this is uh, what you do and then you click um, on OK. And uh, when you've done that, then uh, you are able to uh, export and save the image. We do the same thing now also with this one here. These are onion cells, you see that uh, you can also pull it over across right where the histogram starts and uh, yeah this now increases and improves the contrast but I'm not happy because the nuclei, the two blue dots are too dark. Um, so I'm now dragging the middle one around uh, until I find a position where I can see the nuclei quite nicely and uh, but not too dark and not too bright. Yeah, um, if you pull it too much, uh, the uh, the right one, then you're going to see that the highlights uh, start to yeah completely lose information, content, and start to look kind of very washed out or blown out. Um, so you should not uh, overdo it and uh, just uh, leave uh, the right and the left triangle there where the histogram actually starts. Um, there is also some small pipettes on, on the bottom here, um, which um, allow you to then select the brightest um, and the darkest uh, value, and then the program is going to choose um, automatically the settings. However, um, I rarely use this because I do not always get the results that I want to have. And uh, for this reason, um, I think the manual control is, is always uh, better. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm experimenting around right now and this does not look very nice. Um, I completely messed it up now and so I just uh, reset everything by clicking on the 
the button on the bottom here and everything's being reset and then I can readjust everything again. So let's try the last time here. Here you see already the histogram is quite stretched uh, so it already has a very good uh, use of, um, yeah, of the contrast range so I don't have to move it in very much here. Mm, but the cells, the red cells on the left are a little bit too dark in my uh, for my taste. So what I'm going to do is I have to make everything lighter again so that the cells, the red colored cells are also um, a little bit better visible here. Yeah, and, and that's basically it. Um, now if you want to save everything, don't click save, otherwise you're just gonna save the project. You wanna export the file as. You click export as and then you can export the image as a JPEG. Well, and the second uh, possibility is, is uh, actually a web-based solution. You don't even need to download anything at all. Uh, just visit the page pixlr.com. A little bit difficult to pronounce, pixlr.com. And uh, it works just uh, the same way. And uh, I'm going to show you this now. You open it uh, in the web browser. You just type in the uh, address and you click on the advanced mode. Um, on the left side, uh, you can now open the image and uh, you simply uh, select um, the image uh, that you want to improve. Let's see, use again the onion uh, cells from before and it's opening up in here and it's in the web browser and uh, you click uh, adjustment and also here we have uh, a levels tool and uh, it does look a little bit simpler but essentially does exactly the same thing. You want to choose, uh, you want to click on the white um, the color at the top and this means that all red, green and blue, all primary colors are adjusted at the same time and that's actually what we want. Um, if you now choose uh, the, uh, a primary color then you can do a white balance adjustment and you can give the whole thing a different uh, hue. For example right now yeah, everything looks a little bit too yellow um, yeah, and if we do it like this everything is a little too purple. So I, that's why I generally don't use that but sometimes it might be useful um, if uh, there is a general color tint uh, over the whole image uh, then you can also remove that uh, by adjusting the individual um, colors, individual primary colors. But I just uh, generally um, uh, just keep it normal here and uh, when you click save um, then um, you can type in of course a new file name. I always suggest that you type in a new file name to not touch the original and then you can download the file. It does not directly save it to uh, your disk uh, directly um, you click download and then it will save it to your downloads folder that you have specified for your web browser. And that is basically the program that I would suggest that you try out first um, because um, it is so easy to use and you don't need to download anything. Uh, but GIMP uh, does have a few more functions here. Yeah, um, where and when can you use uh, this here as well? Sometimes if, you have to, if there's a lot of stray light uh, then um, you can also remove that stray light and then it looks like the image is kind of covered with a haze so to say um, and looks a little bit foggy and then by you doing a contrast uh, adjustment you can also remove that haze. Basically I think it's quite surprising what you're able to achieve using a simple contrast adjustment. So at this point I would like to thank again my supporters. Uh, you can see them here on the side or here uh, scrolling up. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your support. You're making uh, videos like this uh, possible. If you are interested in also supporting me please visit uh, the description below. There are a few links uh, there to my GoFundMe page and to my Patreon page. And uh, I would also like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about any topics, this is also a way how you can contribute, uh, post uh, questions and I will try to answer them. At least uh, I will try to answer them. <laughs> I might not know all of the answers, uh, but uh, I'll try and give it my best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Bye bye, see you around next time.